Okay, in order for us to um, get these notes today, you're going to want a pen or a pencil, a highlighter that can write on blue. And as is often the case, this is not the first time we've been exposed to compound inequalities. We have now done two desmos. Um, I used to think, when I first started making notebooks with kids, that giving you the notes first and then doing activities to make the notes make sense was the smart way to do it. I've since learned that's not true. I think it's better to have an idea about the concept and then we take notes that helps you formalize what you know about it. So we're starting today with a definition of a compound inequality. As I said last Friday, when we were first starting to work with compound inequalities, they are very much like a compound word. A compound word has two words that come together to make a word. Um, I think the example I used last week was butterfly. In this case, a compound inequality is an inequality formed by two, joining two inequalities with the word and or the word or. So we're going to start off looking at and inequalities. Let's also use our highlighters to do some note taking here. And inequalities are ones where there is a line stopped by two points on a number line. And everything that's on that line in between those two points is true. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 5. Those two inequalities are going to be combined by the word and. We're going to graph the first one and then the second one and then we're going to graph them as a compound inequality together. So we're going to start off with 2 here and 5 here. And on the bottom graph we're going to do 2 and 5. If I'm graphing x is greater than 2, I'm going to circle the 2, open or close, open, and which direction does the line go? Right. Yep. It's greater than 2. For our next inequality, we have x is less than or equal to 5. What's going to be true about the circle then? Close circle and arrow to the left. So visualize what's going to happen when we combine them on one number line for our joint inequality. Open circle on the 2. Close circle on the 5 and the line is stopped in between those two points. Compound inequalities can be written with the word and, or they can be written with an x in the middle. The larger number on the right, the smaller number on the left, and when I change what's on the left, I put the x in the middle and the number to the left, so we have to flip-flop that inequality symbol. And what was greater than is now going to be less than. So this, instead of reading x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 5, when it's written as a compound inequality, it reads as 2 is less than x and less than or equal to 5. So those are and inequalities when we're dealing with compounds. And then we have or inequalities. Rather than joining in between two points on a graph, or inequalities go both directions away from each other.
So here we have y is less than or equal to 2, negative 2, or y is greater than 1. So we're going to put the negative 2 here and the 1 here. And then on the bottom number line, we're going to get them both on there together. I like the ors in the sense that we don't have to rewrite this. Visually, I'll be honest, I find doing these confusing. I always have to triple check myself. With the or inequalities, they don't get rewritten. It's fine for it to be just like this. When I graph them, I should see arrows going in both directions. Y is less than or equal to negative 2, it's going to the left. Y is also greater than 1, it's going to the right. And when we put them together on the same number line, they do the same thing, but then it's a compound inequality. On the inside, we're going to take words and decide if it's an and or an or inequality. And we're going to graph it. I'm going to do the first one with you, and then you are all going to do the other five as a small group. So first thing I think of when I'm reading the written statement is I just want to know first if it's an and or an or. I'm thinking of a number that is greater than negative 8 and less than or equal to 4. I see both words and and or in there, but can you tell me if this is an and compound or an or? And. This and is, is bringing the two number parts together, isn't it? Yeah. And if I take my highlighter, I can see that I've got greater than negative 8, that greater than, those two words equals one symbol, less than or equal to, those five words need another symbol, don't they? So this is definitely an and. Every year when I use this graphic organizer, I wish that I had remembered to switch these two things because I think it the next thing to do is to write the inequality and then graph it. I always forget. And this makes it so I can't show the words on the screen at the same time that I'm writing them, but I'm going to read them out loud and watch how the words are going to make the inequality come um, go from words to math. Again, I'm going to read the whole statement. I'm thinking of a number that is greater than 8, negative 8, x is greater than negative 8, and less than or equal to 4. I'm using x to stand for that number. Can you see how this came from these words. Yeah. Greater than negative 8, x is greater than negative 8, and x is less than or equal to 4. Because it's an and inequality, I want to rewrite it with just one x. The larger number is 4, so it is going to stay on the right. And this part of the inequality can be written exactly the same. But then I need the negative 8 over here. And what symbol should go here? Less than. Yeah, less than. We're going to switch it. 
instead of saying x is greater than negative 8, we're still saying that. We're just saying that in reverse order. Negative 8 is less than x, which is also left center equal to 4. This is what it's going to look like on the graph. I get an open circle on the negative 8. I get a closed circle on the 4. And every number in between those two numbers, including the 4, would make this inequality true. We have about 10 minutes, and that should be just about enough time to get the other five done, and then we will tuck this in our notebooks and glue it in another day. If we don't finish, we'll find some time to finish it up tomorrow.